Wow. Thank you, Doug, for selecting that music. What would I do today? Wow, wow, wow. I found that to be rather emotional and, and wonderful because it is really what we're all about, that we have this freedom of choice. Our theme for this month is uh, facing our fears, not running from them, not trying to get over the top of them or go around them, but face them. Ernest Holmes said in, his, in the Science of Mind textbook that um, we, do not, we do not pretend those things aren't there. We look at them squarely until we know better, until we know they're not the truth for us. So I invite you to this month's theme, uh, and today is a question of faith. We're going to be talking about faith and looking at faith. However, I want to tell you a little more about who we are. We are a center for spiritual living. We are the mid Midtown. And we are a place where you are welcome and where you will find uh, a positive thinking, positive directed community of people who are here to support one another as we continue that path and we stay on that path as much as possible. We all stumble and fall off to the side and then we pull each other back on. And um, we are a community where we our, our, our classes, our Sunday talks, everything we do here is geared toward bringing us back to that central truth that God is all there is, life is all there is, and how we, what we do with it and what we use it for is really up to us. We can heal and move through almost anything and maybe anything if we have the, have the willingness to do the work, willingness to face things. And so we're all about providing spiritual tools for solutions to everyday problems. Uh, we just completed a class that does that kind of thing. Uh, we are a place that welcomes everyone. We, we, Recognize each person as an expression of the divine. Therefore, your unique and individualness is no accident. It's not something to be put aside or pushed aside. It's something to celebrate. And so we celebrate who you are, where, whatever your race, whatever your ethnicity, whatever your sexual preferences, whatever your sexual identities, on and on and on it goes. All of those things are not divisive in this community. What they are for us is opportunities to celebrate everyone's uniqueness. I have a friend that used to sign off on all of his emails. You are unique, just like everybody else. And that uniqueness, though, is very important and special for each of us. And we're here to support you in that. Further understanding of who we are comes from looking at our uh, Declaration of Principles. This is the core of our beliefs, or at least part of that. There, there's more to it. But if you're here for the first time, this is a great introduction to seeing who we are. So uh, if you'd like, I will read it out loud. Feel free to join me if you'd like to, to read out loud. And if not, simply take it in. I believe in one God, one absolute power, and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love, and it creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative, and, I now, and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life and the immortality of the individual soul forever unfolding. I believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of God to all. I always love to let that soak in for a second. It is, there is a longer document that this comes from, but, but this has the real core, most of the core ideas of it. You can always, you can find it on our website, you can find it online at csl.org and several other places. So <clears throat> right now, I'm excited to introduce to you one of our practitioners. Now for a practitioner, someone who has studied this science of mind teaching, who understands it, who can use it for themselves to bring about change, and can support other people by, by creating a, a conscious space in which you can create and find change in your life as well. So today, our, uh, one of our lead practitioners who is uh, a wonderful, wonderful, clear, clear thinking lady uh, is gonna be bringing us uh, some words and some treatment. So without anything else, let's hear from Judy Ailey. Thank you, Judy. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Well, it's September and in Atlanta this morning, there was like a little chill in the air. So, wow, that's pretty amazing. But um, I was thinking about myself in the early years of this teaching, and I remember saying to myself, 
wow, if I only had faith that this stuff really works. And I thought I needed a huge, perfect level of faith with no doubt whatsoever. But at the time, it just seemed like I was always filled with a lot of doubt. But, you know, what I came to understand after being in this teaching for a while is that it really only takes a tiny bit of faith, sort of like that grain of mustard seed that we read about that the faith of the grain of mustard seed, we can move mountains. And another thing that came to me one time, I, I think in a meditation or in a treatment, and I've heard people say this since, is that it, if I can have the faith of a tiny pinprick of light shining through the darkness, that that's really the amount of faith that I need. Just that tiny little light, that this power and this presence that we call God wants to express its goodness through us. In fact, we are the way that this power expresses goodness in the world. So if we approach this presence and this spirit with simplicity, knowing that all is well, knowing that there is faith involved in this expression of goodness through us, and also knowing that there's an allowing that has to happen. And that's part of what we do is allow this through our faith to happen. So for me, it makes sense that we should have faith in, it, in its desire, in spirits to desire, to express goodness through us in the world. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world around us right now. So many messages coming at us from every direction. Lots of stuff to worry about. Lots of stuff to get mad about, furious about. You know, it looks to me like the intensity of all of that stuff is, is only going to grow in the next few months. And hopefully, I don't, I don't know. That's just kind of how it feels. But I think this is a perfect time to employ this teaching. If I remember that where my attention goes, my energy flows. So I daily remind myself to take my attention off of the big shiny objects out there that seem to be demanding my attention or demanding my worry. And instead focus myself on where I want my life and where I want the life of the world to go. And I have faith that my intentions are good and are supported by this universal loving presence of good. So I focus myself on acts of faith, knowing that this power of good flows through me in the world to the degree that I allow it. So ask yourself, what kind of world, country, state, neighborhood, family, do you want to be in? Do you want to live in? Think of that and then with faith, take action to make it happen. I have a reading that I want to share from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, and this is from the Science of Mind textbook. It's in the section on what it does. Here he goes. Let us restate our principle. We are surrounded by an infinite possibility. It is goodness, life, law, and reason. In expressing itself through us, it becomes more fully conscious of its own being. Therefore, it wishes to express through us. As it passes into our being, it automatically becomes the law of our lives. It can pass into expression through us only as we consciously allow it to do so. Therefore, we should have faith in it and faith in its desire and its ability to do for us all that we shall ever need to have done. Since it must pass through our consciousness to operate for us, we must be conscious that it is doing so. All right. So that really spoke to me about faith and belief that this presence and this power wants to express as goodness through us. 
And it really takes just that really light, ray of light that can shine through as faith. So I want to move from that, my thoughts on that, to leading us in a spiritual mind treatment. So if you'll get comfortable wherever you are, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, and just take a couple of nice, slow, deep breaths and allow yourself and your mind and your thoughts to be fully present right here and right now. And I'm going to state these words in the first person for myself, but please know that they are for you. Please accept them for yourself. I recognize and know that I am surrounded by, filled with, immersed in a loving presence and power for good. That this presence created me as an expression of itself and of its goodness and its love and its health and its prosperity and its love in the world that this presence only desires to express through me in greater and greater ways. It's looking for ways to express in the world, this spirit, this power. And I am its open and perfect vehicle for the expression of itself. I am open, I'm an open conduit and expression of fabulous, opulent prosperity. I am the perfect expression of vibrant, alive health in every way that my body is functioning perfectly with vibrant energy, with all systems in perfect harmony, functioning with great ease. I know that I am the perfect expression of love in the world and of great intelligence that this power and this presence fills me with ideas, with thoughts, with inspiration of ways to do things in my world that are new to me, that allow me to take steps in a direction that is perfect for me. And I know that I am fully and 100% supported in love in my actions and in the desires to express greater good in my life. I know that I am never separated from this power of life. This is a power of oneness, of wholeness, of completeness. I am never separated from it. And I know that it is never separated against itself. It's a oneness, it's a wholeness. And in that knowing, I have peace, and a sense that all is well, and that no matter what the appearance of things may be, that there is a goodness behind it all, a wholeness and a peace and a love. I turn away right now from any worry and fear and obsession that I may have with the appearance of things falling apart in my world or the appearance of, of struggle and strain and, and how how can this be a situation for good? How can this be? And instead, I allow this presence of oneness, of wholeness, of truth, of divine perfection and intelligence to express through my mind as thoughts, as new ways of looking at things, as, as the presence of me being in my world and influencing and being the expression of love and peace and goodness wherever I am, whoever I'm interacting with. So I know that this is a truth, that I am an open flow, an open opportunity for God to express in the world in greater and greater ways. So I'm just grateful for knowing this. I have faith that this is the truth in my life. So I release this now with great thanksgiving, knowing that it is so, and so it is. Just a little faith. <clears throat> Can't listen to that song without putting on my hat. Sorry. 
being a little silly this morning, having a good time, enjoying this wonderful weather. So yeah, you know, it's fascinating to me that uh, every genre of music that we have, including country western, and I guess that's kind of on the border of country western song, um, carries the truth of this teaching somewhere in it. We've got people in every walk of life, in every way, that are actually, I'll spare you that for the rest of the time, are actually um, bringing the truth of life forward. That's what music's all about, all kinds of music. Uh, from, the, from jazz, which carries it, it within its structure, the relationships between the planets and the, and the, the elements in the universe itself. If when you analyze it and break it down and look at the numbers, it, it comes out there. It's just so much that music can do. So as we are wandering through this crazy current time we live in, which, you know, I'm sure everybody for eons has said the same thing. This is a crazy time we live in. Um, we are all about the business of finding our way through it, of living well, and of allowing spirit to move through us as us without being a separate thing at all, because it's not. So, so as we come to today's talk, I mean, this whole month we're looking at fear, not so that because we need to be afraid of it, but because we absolutely don't need to be afraid of it. It's our opportunity this month to really take a look at, at not only the fears around us, but the fears within us and, and how to, um, to navigate that whole thing. Um, because, because we all have them, they all show up. Uh, false evidence appearing real, that's one of those you know, little, little tricky names for it. I mean, it just shows up in all kinds of ways. Um, and, we, if, and if we're not careful, our fears can become our focus to the point where we believe in them. And as soon as we are doing that, then we are creating worry, and worry is simply faith turned backwards. When you believe in your fears, you're turning your faith into utilizing it on behalf of the fear. So we always have faith. You can't, you can't not have faith. Faith is built into you. You have the faith that the chair you're sitting in will hold you up. You have faith that the, that the breath, next breath you take will, will serve you well and fill you with life. So we're always, we're always in faith, whether it's faith in the power of good and the power of greatness in our lives or faith in, oh my God, our, our lacks, limitations, and limits. And it's not always easy to move, move from one to the other. We do have challenges, and we're going to talk a little about that today. Um, you know, when I was um, very young, I took as a motto, because I grew up in another faith tradition, um, a, a passage in, in the book of Matthew, where, where the, whole, the writer is talking about, you know, don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to have for food. I mean, the birds don't worry about it. The lilies of the field don't worry about whether they're beautiful or not. They just are. And, and so this whole thing builds up and then it, then it concludes with seek ye first the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added to you. So instead of putting your focus and fear and determination and thought around the things around us, get serious and focused about the truth of who we are, that kingdom, that beingness of life or spirit or love that's right there within us and has been all along. You know, the great gift, the greatest gift that spirit ever gave us is the gift of life. And it's already given. You can't give it back. Sorry, you're stuck with it. So what we, what we get to do then is to do something with it according to what we desire. And we are born into this whole system that, that responds to us according to our beliefs and according to what we learn about it. Now, we, we typically are not born into the knowledge of that, although some of people on this call were born into this teaching and born into this understanding. For some of us, it took a while to get here. I had an early understanding that, that God was on my side no matter what, and somehow still kind of out there and probably wasn't too keen on some of my secrets, but, but <clears throat> I still felt that no matter what, it had my back. Although at the time I thought of it as a he. In college one year, and I tell my stories about myself so that I don't pick on you. You get to, you know, not, not to, to, to raise me up, but simply to give you examples that you may find within yourself. 
but in college I was going to see a friend and was determined to spend the weekend with her. And I, uh, I got to the, the air, little airport outside in Knoxville, Tennessee. And in those days, it was a very small airport in a very small town. And I went to the desk and got ready to get my standby ticket because that's how we students flew in those days. And uh, they said, oh, well, there's no flight going to uh, Chattanooga today. And I'm like, but there has to be. I want to go. And they're like, no, there's no flight there. It's only... Today, it only goes one way, and, and you know, it flies one way one day and one day the next, and there's only one flight. So I walked away, and I went in, and I, I sort of walked in circles around in the, in the airport thinking, this is just can't be, because I only have the weekend. I've got to get there. And so I uh, went back to the desk after thinking about it, and I said, well, there has to be some way for me to get to Chattanooga. Well, we can fly you to Nashville, and you can take a bus from Chattanooga to Chattanooga. And I'm like, okay. And that worked out. And I got there and I thought, well, God did it again. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven. And I got to go spend the weekend with my girlfriend at the time. And it was like, and my whole life has worked that way. When I remember to step back from the fear and look to that, there has to be a solution. There has to be a place. There has to be a way. And I, I credit my family for giving me that basic belief and basic understanding from very young. And um, I saw transformations go on in my parents during, during my really formative years that were um, caught my attention in a way that I, there has to be something to this God stuff. So I started pursuing that and looking at that. I want to share with you um, a bit on the screen here. Give me one second. I'm a little, I thought I was ready for this and I am. Here we go. So, um, you can't see that yet, can you? But now you can. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this, this wonderful teaching of ours says, I live in the faith that there is a presence and power greater than I am that nurtures and supports me in ways I could not even imagine. See, that's, a, that's the foundational starting place for this whole business of faith. We start from that place of knowing and believing and finding a way to believe that there is a power and a presence that's greater than we are that nurtures us. Now, whether you, you think of that power as God, you think of it as spirit, you think of it as energy, you think of it as... Um, as pure science, because we can look at it through the scientific windows as, as well and realize that, that just the act of looking at something and thinking about it changes it physiologically. I recently got a, a, an email and a shared website from, from my predecessor here, Paul Garnier, showing us a whole structure of scientific um, data that says there is no objective hard reality in the universe. It's all subjective. It all shows up according to our beliefs, according to what people are studying, what they're looking at. And it was just, it's fascinating. I had heard, I had heard that before, but I had not heard it quite as well documented as this is. So, so faith is saying that there is something, whether it's, it's a spirit, it's an energy, it's a light, it's a life. You know, I, if people did not believe on some level that there's a possibility of something better. We wouldn't be rioting in the streets. People wouldn't be arguing for their point of view. People would not be going through what we're going through right now. It is driven by a common belief that there's a greater life, a greater loving, and greater possibility for all of us. Now, we may have very different opposing ideas to how that can come about, and some of it's pretty awful as far as I'm concerned, especially the ones that don't agree with me, but it's, it really is uh, motivated by a desire, a loving desire to have a greater life experience. And we all have our ideas of what that might be. But what's true about it, what's, un what's universal about it is we're all using the same energy, the same power, the same love, the same faith, if you will, to move us toward that, that something, that next something. 
that we have and that's part of who we are. Oh yeah, let's don't go there yet. Mm -mm. Too many words. <laughs> so how do we achieve it? How do we acquire a greater sense of faith? If faith will give us a greater confidence and peace and poise, Ernest, Ernest says in the chapter on faith, faith is based on peace, poise, and assurances. How do we get that? How do we acquire that? Especially if, if you've had a rough time, and some people have had a really rough time. And as, they, as that has gone on, we've lost faith often in something positive happening. Well, Holmes says there's three ways, <clears throat> three sets of ways to learn and ways to know that we can come to faith. The first one he talks about, and the one that I got introduced to the most once I got into this teaching, because I had pretty well thrown all that stuff out when I came here to, uh, years, years ago. And I, um, it's a faith in, it's, it's logic. Logic is one of those ways that we connect. The, uh, the next one is experience. And the last one is intuitive knowing. So let's talk about logic first. Hmm. Logic in some ways is based on what we just saw or heard. That, that quote that I just shared with you. It starts with the belief that there's a power for good, there's some kind of power at work for all of us equally. And that, that in my opinion, has to be for good. Otherwise, it would collapse on itself. Otherwise, we, this would have all ended eons ago. And we never would have gotten to this point in creation and in development. So logically, we start with the idea that there is one power, not two, but one, that's being interpreted in many, many different ways and used in many different ways. And that one power is the place we think from. We do the logic from. And you know, in the, my early days in this, this, I didn't have a lot of emotion around any of it when I first got into science of mind. It was science for me because I was a science, had a science background. And I looked at, okay, if this is the logic, there's one power and it's for good and it's for me, then how do I interpret what's going on in my life? And I begin to really think that through. And you know, when you really think that through, it turns into what we teach around here is the spiritual mind treatment. There's one God, one power, one life. It is me. If there's only one energy, then it's got to be me. I can't be, I can't be separate from it because then there would be two. So there's one and I'm it along with many, many other people. And so then the logic from there is therefore whatever is happening in my life must be for some kind of good. It must be for somehow either pointing me toward my good or showing me what I shouldn't have in my, in my world as my good. You know, one of the things that people complain about once they get into this teaching is that sometimes they get worse instead of better. And, and that worse, or so, they, so it seems, and that worse is when all of that other stuff starts showing up in our lives to say, oh, you believe in good? Well, what about this? And what about that? What about that? And it's showing up so I can look it square in the face and say that is just old, based on old beliefs that I no longer hold, and I'm ready to let them go and be done with them. And I let them go by putting something else in their place, by coming back again and again, that there's a power for good in the universe that is for me and for you and for each of us. And on that, I will build my faith. The second area is the area of experience. As we experience opportunities for our faith to show up in really powerful, positive ways, or even tiny little ways, we begin to build faith. And we talked about this a little last week. Early, early in, the, in our classes, we teach you to, to manifest parking space, spaces, which sounds really silly. Well, right now it's silly because nobody's going anywhere. But when we were, to, to think ahead of time about, I, I want my best parking spot, I want it near the front of the place, and I want to know that there's a coordinating consciousness that's going to open that up and make it, make it happen for me. And every time it does, we build a little more faith. One of the most fascinating nights I, when I was teaching this, this in a class, we had just been over this 
and we all, it was in Tampa, Florida, and we all went heading out from there to, um, from the, the class over to um, Village Inn for some good late night carbs and, and, and all of that. And so we went, and everybody in the class had, was, had declared, I'm gonna have the right and perfect parking space in front of the door. I got there first and the parking spot right beside the door was there. I decided to leave it and see what happened. So I parked a couple of spaces over. As the others were coming, everything between where I parked and the parking and the door cleared out and they all had their, their closest possible to the door. It was just amazing to watch. And it was and not surprising because I've done this, you know, and the point isn't to be able to have parking spots except during Christmas holidays when you want to get close to the door, but it's about learning and building a faith in what you're doing and what, how this in, in minute energy works. Because as we get, build that, then when we look at bigger, better, greater things, things like physical healing, things where, where our faith there and can, ha can have instant, instantaneous change. I'm trying to decide how many stories to tell here because I got lots and lots and lots of them. But, uh, the, uh, and the other way to build experience is when we know there's something within us that's saying, do this, be this, go in this direction. And, there, and all the evidence may point to the contrary and, um, and follow it anyway. And then you find out. I learned in, two, in the year 2000 when I left Tampa and went to on sabbatical or on a, on a walkabout really because I knew I had three months that I wanted to take a break. I needed to get out somewhere and do something completely different. So I did. And I um, put all my stuff in storage, sold most of it, so kept some of it, put, put what I could take in my car and fill up the back seat and thought I would have three months just to follow my nose. I'd always wanted to do that. Backpacking around Europe had been a fantasy. Well, this wasn't backpacking, I was in the car, but it was around this country. And my three months turned into six months and turned into nine months. And what I discovered along the way were just example after example where I would think I, I, I gotta go get a job or I've gotta go back home because I'm running out of everything and then suddenly have it boom, show up. Pulled into a gas station once with $3 worth of gas out in Arizona. And, and it's a long way between gas stations there, but I had three bucks left. And so I thought, well, I'll put gas in the car and, and, or maybe I'll put $2 in the car and I'll have a dollar left for something in the store. And, and in the puddle, there was a puddle, it rained, it does rain in Arizona. There was a $20 bill. I picked it up, I bought $20 worth of gas and $3 worth of food. And it was perfect. Another time, like when I felt like I was kind of stuck, I got a nudge from inside. It was the craziest thing in the world. Pull into this casino. I don't recommend people using casinos to develop their prosperity because most people don't. But I walked in, I put a nickel in the nickel slot machine and I walked away with 20 bucks. I didn't do another nickel. I just said one was enough. So, so you know, you, there are opportunities that show up again and again that show us how spirit is protecting and supporting and providing for us, but we have to be, have the eyes to see it. And if we, as we watch for it and we see it and the more we watch for it, the more it shows up, it builds our faith. It builds our faith in the goodness of life and the goodness of spirit and the goodness of God. And then the last thing is just intuitive knowing. Some of you really know that you know that this is what it is. You don't have to be talked into it. You don't have to be shown. There's just a kind of intuitive knowing that goes deep. That builds as you build that experience in faith. I, I've known people who say, well, I know I'm not ever gonna get a cold and they don't. Because, not because they've said that, but because deep down they really believe and know intuitively this is what happens. I know that I'm going to travel. I know these, that, that I have an important uh, opportunity to enjoy life in lots of different places and ways. And that just keeps showing up for me over and over again. And as soon as I got that clear about that again, I had all kinds of offers from around the country and, and around the world to come visit. I'm not going to all of them yet. So, 
it, you know, and, and, and there's just so many places where that intuition shows up. Hmm. Now here's the, here's an important piece of this. I think, um, I think it's important to say that, that this kind of faith is not magic. It may sometimes appear to be because it can be such a, um, seemingly abnormal sort of thing. But there really is no magic. Today's magic is yet, or today's, today's magic is tomorrow's science. Yesterday's magic is today's science. If, if Moses had noticed, had seen an airplane flying out of, the, out of Egypt over to Jerusalem, he would, have seen, he would have seen a big silver thing in the sky that made no sense of how it could even fly. It would have been magic. And in truth, it wasn't. It's all about aerodynamics and the science of, of managing all of those things. Well, the same thing is true in our building our faith now. What may appear to be magic, you set an intention, you set a desire, you determine a parking space for yourself. Well, we are all collectively part of a, of a universal consciousness. And if there's no way that your desire is going to do harm to anyone else, then, then this amazing consciousness in which we live is going to work with the various minds of all of us because it's guiding all of us to provide you with that opportunity to know itself better. It's, it's, and, and again, we can, we can go into quantum physics and, and talk about how, that, how it works from that standpoint. But it's just, it's not just supernatural magic because there is no supernatural. There is nothing beyond the naturalness of God, the naturalness of spirit. Natural laws are spiritual laws. And, and it all remains grounded in that uh, reality. And for me, that was the, the kicker when I first came into this teaching, when I first heard that and recognized that, yes, I can build faith on, on reasonable, logical thinking and understanding and it takes it takes some work it's not it's not superficial just uh i'm going to say my word and everything will happen yay rah it's about changing what i really believe underneath it and the last thing i'll say about all this is that underneath and beyond it all if you wonder what you really believe and you're not sure notice what you feel about something Notice how you feel about a person, how you feel about a situation. Does it frighten you or is it, do you walk in, do you think about it with no, no, no problem, no, no hit on it, no emotional reaction? Because when, the, when there's fear there, it is telling you that there's something you are still believing that is not God, not truth, not power, not reality. And that's okay, because that's the good news, because your emotions then can give you clues into where you need to look at changing your mind. We have all the tools, we teach the tools, Ernest, in how to change your mind, how to work with this, how to get to those places where you can come to believe like the, the amazing women in, the, in that opening video who, who just go for it. They set their beliefs that they can do it. You know, the question we often ask is, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Who would you be? if you knew you'd always be loved and always had been and always would be. Questions like that, which, which point us to, to, to recognizing that really love is all there is. It's who we are, it's what we're about. And anything that seems wonky from that is simply the opportunity to get back on track, to get back on the path, get back on the trail, get back on the truth of who we are. Because who we are is wonderful. One more quote. This is all my all time favorite. You've heard it before many times. Faith is this. When I come to the end of the light that I have known and I step out into the darkness, my faith will, ah, sorry, step out into the darkness. My faith will let me know, tells me, that my foot will either find solid ground or I will fly because there's no other choice. Thank you. Thank you for your attention and time. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this and uh, have a great, great day because you're wonderful and so it is. Thank you. Ah, okay. Yay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you back.
So uh, now our, our, one, our board member, uh, Cynthia McCarthy, the Reverend Cynthia McCarthy, is going to be sharing um, our announcements and inviting you to think about that wonderful flow of prosperity. So I'm going to be quiet now. Cynthia, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Bob. That was very inspirational as always. Thank you. So I do want to acknowledge that it's Labor Day weekend and say happy Labor Day weekend to everyone. So I'm a bit of a nerd. So I was reading about Labor Day this morning and how it came about and all of that good stuff. And Labor Day pays tribute to the American worker because they create the nation's strength and prosperity. I read that this morning and it really struck me and I really um, appreciated it in a different way. So this year, um, that idea of strength and prosperity is complicated for a lot of people. You know, we have the range of the essential workers. There are too many to name, but I, of course, immediately think of doctors and nurses with the pandemic and COVID-19. And then we have the range of, of workers who have lost their jobs and lost um, their work because of the pandemic. But we, as a center and as a teaching, we know the value in celebrating the principles of prosperity and abundance because they do occur naturally when we choose to live in that flow of giving and receiving. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to say thank you for all the ways that you all continue giving and supporting our center. And let's see, let me put up in the chat here. These are the various ways that you can do that. You can visit our website. Um, you can do this through PayPal still. There's a link on there. And uh, you could set it up if you want it to be recurring. We have a new software program realm that can do that. You could still mail a check in to us. We can accept that and appreciate that. And however you give, whether it's your time, your talent, or a monetary donation, or a combination of all of that, uh, let's, would you join me in saying our affirmation of prosperity? Now really say this and know that you are in the flow. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow. And all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. All right. And then we have a few announcements for this week. Uh, we, of course, just got into our new theme for the month, Facing the Fear. Uh, next Sunday, Dr. Bob will be talking about skeptic skepticism, doubt, and faith. Um, that looks like a good one. Today, after service, uh, stay on, and we're going to have a little chat and chat with each other and open, keep the Zoom open. And, and uh, I think Bob has some other things planned as well. So stick around for that. Um, a reminder during the week, we have spiritual empowerment sessions on Tuesdays at noon. It's the same Zoom code and the, the password. You pop on and we sort of check in, just a small group. And Reverend Dr. Bob leads us with the spiritual mind treatment and affirmative prayer. And it is so powerful and meaningful. I am on there quite a bit, so I highly recommend that. Um, our Sunday morning discussion group meets before service at 10 a.m. And it's, again, the same Zoom, same passcode. Um, and that's uh, linked to the science of mind, the reading. You can plow through the whole book in a year. Um, and that information is on the website as well if you're interested in that. Um, everyone's welcome to pop on for that. Uh, we do have a class coming up. Dr. Bob is going to be teaching a class on mental equivalence. And um, if you register early within the next couple of days, you save 30 bucks. So for sure, check that out. Information is on the website and um, classes, class starts September 16th. Uh, it's, there's two options. There's a Wednesday morning and a Wednesday evening. And mental equivalence, if you have not had this class, I, I definitely recommend it. Um, I know I struggled a little bit when I first found the teaching and when I went through foundations and I felt like I didn't really understand it. And the best way, um, you know, I understood that was the idea of how much good can you accept? 
And it, that, this class really builds on that and, and creating that in your mind and then who knows what you could manifest. So definitely check into that if interested. Uh, let's see what else have we got. The prayer practitioners are available. Um, a couple of them put their information up in the chat. Um, also, if that seems like something maybe you're not quite ready for or nervous about or anything like that, first of all, don't be nervous. They're wonderful people. But if you would prefer, if you go to the website, there is a link. Um, if you click on home and the menu drops down, you can submit your prayer request. If you would prefer to just do it that way, we are happy to pray for you and um, be, there you, be there for you in that way. Um, other things, you can sign up for our newsletter on the website. We want you guys, everybody to stay connected during this time. It's still kind of weird. We're feeling it out, doing everything online. We want to make sure you are informed and know everything that's going on. Um, by visiting our website, you can sign up for the newsletter and then you're going to, it's just once a week, we tell you what's going on. Um, and we also have our newcomer information. If you're still, if you're new to the center and you can go on there and it has all of our information about the teaching and about the center and it's, it's great to have that on there. You can also follow us on Facebook. Um, we promote all kinds of information on there about upcoming um, classes that we have, upcoming services and so on. Thank you to our board of trustees. Thank you to our volunteers. We still have people volunteering in various ways, mailing things out. We love it. We appreciate it so much. Um, yeah. And don't forget to stay after today. I think that's everything. <laughs> Thanks. That is good job, Cynthia. Thank you. Uh, I would just want to add one thing on the class. Um, this class is really a, uh, a good follow-up to the one we just completed because in the first class, in the one before, we really looked at what are those nagging beliefs that get in the way of our faith and how do we transform them into faith. And in this class, we're going to build on that with your mental equivalence or how to take that potential and turn it into action. And that's our, that's the focus of this. And you notice the prices. I didn't, I failed to get it on this, this one, but uh, if when you go to the website, if you have a if you have a partner or someone you're sharing your household or your your money with, there is a, a reduced price for couples. So uh, you can you can sign on. One of you will sign on as the primary, and then this, there's a place to do the spouse. And again, those prices are adjusted according to the when you when you register. We do that because this class re requires a good deal of of getting things set up online and I just need a, as much time as possible. It's hard to pull last minute people in on this sort of thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate being a part of this with you. So um, let's join together in our closing affirmation. You'll find it uh, on the screen. That's a great place to find it. Here we go. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding. I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. Thank you all. Hang on. We'll take a, yeah.